Hi folks. I've got a few things I want to talk about, but it's pretty random really. And it may only be very short. Depending on how many people bother, I'm not sure if a lot of people are going to turn up due to um, its proximity to Christmas. Let's see how we get on. Oh, what a day. What a week. Hope all you guys and girls have been good. I find Santa won't be calling. I find Christmas mug. Yeah. And plenty of tea to boot. Uh, I was just going to look at something on my note and I realised the um, battery was at 3% for that which I was it. Uh, I don't think I've really got much in the way of news. Uh, I better just double check actually. This is anything I want to cover. This is not going to be a full uh, version. so. Here's an interesting one. Um, I don't even have my outline missing. Um, this is very interesting. Zinka, who's new on the um, on the forum, posted this week, and he's uh, he's porting the um, ice core design. Um, onto PCAP, which is very cool. Well done, Zinka. That's brilliant. Really good. I haven't taken a look yet, I haven't had a chance. We could have a peek in a bit if you like. Oh, I don't know which version of Keycat I've got. Doesn't say here. Uh, I'm going to have a look at that because it's interesting. I wonder if I can open it. I don't know if my version. Um, you can look at the uh, repo on GitHub. Actually, looks really good. Nicely rendered. Uh, let me show you. No. Let me share this with you. Make it a bit wider. Aren't you? <sighs> so this is the uh, page. Um, let me um, something I do need to do with this is. Um, Just check this out. Where else do we can put a this to join? Um, I want to dash. Let's uh, clone. What? That's weird. What happened? What did you do? Hmm. 
Put that somewhere here. Cloning. Need to my computer. I wonder if I can open this. I don't know which version of PCAD I've got. It may be a rather old version. Let's have a look. Here is just a completely blank my system. Hold on. Uh, what called? Ice cold pizza. Should be down here. Oh, I've done this to the wrong place, to use the wrong word, so yeah. Mm -hmm. see this one. Hmm. I've got it open. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, if we look here, um, the renders are really nice actually. Let me put you up a bit. Yeah, it's not good enough for crystals. Only inductors, but they're a bit weird. Them's a bit unique in my library. And the bottom, oh! That's weird. What's he done? He's moved the um, SD card, and is that a different SD card? I think maybe it is. And what's this here? He's put a full size HDMI on there for you. What is that? Oh no, he's just. Oh, he's flipped it onto the other side to get the pins around the right way. That's a cool trick. Very good. <laughs> nice. Um, and I can open it actually. Okay, let's do that. So let me add, add the pad, so to speak. Add. I do find that uh, you can see me a bit strange. Is this because you need to change the default behavior? It's been years since I've used it. Um, had some nasty um, defaults, which I think you can now change in terms of the way it zooms. It uses me this zoom auto size. But I think you can go to preferences now and change that. So I hear. Here. Uh, Preview viewer. Can you see that? I'm going to use up all my cycles here. Hmm. 
Mm, look at that. Uh, it's not picking up the um, SG RAM for some reason. Let me just add this in, guys, so that you can see it. Under uh, capture. There we go, look at that. Nice. I know that's got slightly older version here with um, okay. Okay. pretty yeah so it doesn't I don't have the parts presumably uh, for the SD RAM 3D library and the SD card or the HDMI micro HDMI Otherwise, it's very good, right? And feel. You don't have any choices here. Jesus. Sold them on. Hello. Any choices here? Yeah. Hmm, quite right. Let's see if we're in. And the third. Yeah, it's darker, man. It's darker. Yeah, oh, darker still. Yeah, we're kind of almost there. Mm. No, it's Try the ray trace version. Wow. Oh, it can't get it every time you move. Of course it does. Wowzer. Very impressive, man. I like that. That looks like a new underneath. Well, it might be a bit faster on this machine. Mind you, I haven't got any of the optimizations I should be under installed. Very cool. It's well since I played with PK. Maybe I should do a PK for it. Not. Trouble is. My muscle memory is based around evil. Doing anything in keyboard is going to take me 
Do I have to open that bar separately? So this might be a bit random, this plan. How do you get to the goddamn circuit if you don't? No, it's not this update from the schematic. How do I switch to the schematic? Forgive me. I am Mr. Crom. How you doing? Very few people joined us this evening. Probably for Christmas. Uh, as I said on the uh, forum, my stream this evening is likely to be fairly random. Uh, so at the moment, what you're looking at here is, uh, can you see what I've already posted, Mythical? I don't know if it shows the old, can you see the links I've posted to the um, keycap version of IceCore that um, uh, Zinc has done? Okay, uh, so one of our users, Zinc, has decided to move IceCore over into PCAT. So I've just been opening up and having a look because it's my first look at it. Um, so you can see I've got the circuit up. Um, I've also got the uh, render, which is kind of cool. Uh, where did I put that? Remove the render, let's just remove 3D viewer. Um, So this is the three D view on. I've got ray tracing on, I should turn that on. Not quite as good as the renders that he does on his site. He's obviously added more parts wise. Um, turn the ray tracing off because that's really slow shit there. But yeah, it's kind of cool. So you see, some of the parts are missing here. So the 3D part for USB. And the SD RAM, the two inductors, and the crystals, and the buttons. And then on the bottom, the SD card uh, is also missing, as is the HDMI. But notice he's put the HDMI on the back, which is kind of cool. It shows the problem that we have with the HDMI, with it being inverted. But it's kind of cool. I'm fine.
Dramatical used uh, Design Spark. Um, design Spark. Oh, uh, yeah, isn't that based on another CAD program as well? I can't remember what it's called. But yeah. So it's kind of cool that um, he's done this. Uh, I'm trying to work out how to get to the schematic. Um, forgotten me, people. Uh, that's we draw from schematic to form design. Hold on. Am I missing some tools? Or do I have to open the file separately? Is that it? Okay, let's have a look at that. So here's the schematic in keycap. So, uh, I don't know how he did the porting process, whether he automated it and then just went in and fixed stuff or not. Very interesting. Well done. Well done indeed, Sinker. Change this to more of that. Nice, I like it. I like it a lot. I have trouble moving around and keep uh, I need to change the basic settings, I think. Very good. Okay. So I'm going to just quit it. Nice one. So that's that. Um, let's just close that. No, okay. So that's the forum thread, just in case you can see it.
I'm gonna put um nutshells as well. What are you looking for, girl? So that was that news. Now, just uh, for my projects, we could have a little conversation here. Um, when I when we spoke about the um, what we do in 2021. Um, I said I wanted to cover quite a bit on the robotic side, so I will do that. But also, there's some retro stuff that needs to be covered. Um, I need to do a ver NMIGEN version of uh, the uh, processor that uh, Ken's working on, among other things. And there's quite a lot of work that uh, Laurie's doing on the retro side, importing various different games and stuff. So um, all of that's got to happen as well. So I think what we'll do is probably keep the stream more general, and then we'll do project or subject specific um, videos, i.e. recorded ones. I can put up on YouTube. That way, I can cover all of the various uh, different subjects. In a bit more detail as well. Um, the only thing with the video stuff is I won't necessarily be able to do that every week. Depends on the schedule, really. Um, the trouble with the video stuff is you have to edit it as well before you put it up, unlike the stream, which is something you just do a few hours and that's it. So there's, you know, effectively a post production of the video just to make it work. There's also more planning, uh, but I think Laurie will help on the retro side, um, and I'll just have to do more planning on the robotic side. But I believe we'll be able to get there eventually. So, uh, that was, what thread was that? Uh, well, it's a combination, that's covered, mm. uh, yes, we can give a link for that. The, uh, that's uh, possible NMIGEN projects. The name of that thread. So that discussion continues. Um, maybe we do a review of that. We do a kind. Of, maybe we do a re review stream uh, next Wednesday if I get a chance, or Friday possibly. Um, I don't know. Probably going to be next Wednesday rather than Friday. I think definitely a, more of a Wednesday one. Um, that's the uh, forum stuff. Um, do you have some comments on? I did answer some more questions talking about on the robotic side. Um, I want to do a couple of things. I want to do some bio inspired robots. Maybe a hexapod, and also a more practical kind of wheeled robot. Um, and what we were talking about in the last stream was the idea of having that robot be useful or having it having a purpose in that uh, we get it to recognise and retrieve Lego bricks, i.e., clear up after our Lego messes, or more importantly, our children's Lego messes. Um, Although mine have outgrown that somewhat now, they're all grown up. Um, so the questions that I was answering there for um, Laurie were, would this be some sort of kit? So yes, definitely. I'm not sure whether that would be an entire kit to start with, or maybe we do it in pieces as we cover them. Each time we cover it in the videos, the new parts of them will be available. Um, 
I'm still looking at that. I've been looking, sourcing the various different pieces, and we need to do some. I need to do some testing on how well or not those operate, or buying any quantity of those. So that'll be a kind of interactive process at the beginning of the year. Um, definitely for the motors or for the wheels. Um, uh, what motors? Yes, so I did actually show some of these last time. Most likely, it would be something like these. These are pretty good, but they're actually slightly more expensive than. One of the cheaper ones to get, and I don't know whether cheaper is a fair way to go in this, but we should consider it. Um, and these play quite nicely if you want a reasonable size. These kind of combinations. Um, so this is one of the wheels. These are commonly available. They're not too expensive. Quite good wheels. They're actually rubber wheels, so that's quite good. And then you get uh, the matching motor. These ones, very low cost. So that fits directly on those slot nicely into there. So they're very easy to do. Um, the mounting is a bit more complicated than the other ones, which have a nice little bracket. But these do have screw holes. The other thing I've seen done is some strapping, but uh, oh, there's one at the end as well. I didn't notice that before. Don't know if that's very practical. So there are options there. It also has a keying part here, which is kind of useful. Okay, so there's that combination. The reason I quite like these, or they're a bit bigger and bulkier, is they are relatively low cost as combinations. They'll be fairly easy to do a kind of four wheel drive. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can get a focus on there with these. So that's another alternative. And inside the motor part of that, you can see at the end there, it's just a very simple brushed motor. The housing in the uh, yellow unit here is really, it's, it's a combination of two things. It's gearing, plus it's got a right angled uh, mechanical converter. So it converts the rotation from this way to so this no, way, no, this, this. like that. So it actually does a right angle. Which is quite good. Um, I mean, you can actually create a vehicle with stepper motors, but you know, with this sort of ilk, but they don't make very good uh, propulsion systems. They're okay if you want. Uh, if you're doing something like creating a, anyone remembers things like turkey pot whereby you had a kind of motorized pen, effectively. So it's like a unit, normally with two uh, stepper motor driven wheels and then a third caster type thing. Uh, and it will rest on the pen. And so you can have it draw stuff. That's when the steppers are useful. Because you want positional accuracy then, or movement accuracy within a confined area. No good for the sort of uh, application that we want. So it's something that we could look at doing as well, because it's quite an interesting thing creating turtle box. 
doing that. You can do that all of that in the FPGA. You don't even need mouse controller parts for that because coding is very simple. Um, suitable batteries. Well, you know, to start with, you can just do something as simple as that. So you see six double A's. So those sort of units. Six double A's give you um, about nine volts, which is enough. Um, but eventually, we want to use uh, lipos. Lipo 4 type batteries, those tend to be pretty good, and you need to have probably uh, three of them. I would imagine maybe four, depending. Depends on the motor choices and the voltages of the particular motors. But if you have a, 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 a lipo, is I think three point nominally 3.2. So if you had four of those, you'd have. 12.8 or something of that ilk. But when they discharge, they go down to, you know, significantly less than they're down to 2.8. So um, you're talking about a 12 volt system, though, potentially. You probably could get away with just using three of them, but that's an odd number, particularly for any battery um, management type stuff. And two of them isn't really enough. Two, 3.2, 3.2. 6.4 but that's your top end voltage when it goes down to 2.8 you're you know out of range most of those motor drivers that i'm looking at using uh, like the a4950 controller they like to see at least eight volts otherwise they um will probably get an under voltage error uh, when else was he asking uh, we talked about videos, which I mentioned earlier. Um, programming will be a mixture of MicroPython and Nmigen. That is definitely the objective. Um, and that way, pretty much everything's done in in Python. Basically. Um, although sometimes you do need to use more specialist bits of code, for example, some C, low level C. Um, and sometimes even some Verilog. But the bulk of the bit that we'd be concerned with will be MIGEN and either circuit Python or like your circuit Python and um, Michael Python. There is one other interesting note I should make. Um, one of the issues with, so this is definitely a news item. Let me see if I can find this. Um, finding well. So one of the issues I had with um, when I was looking at using MicroPython first over CircuitPython was to do with the lack of async I/O. So I really want to use the async I/O um, structures. That my entire idea of how this will work is based more around async IO on the MicroPython type side. But what I found out is um, there has been an addition to MicroPython. And I'm trying to find the link. It basically put some async IO support in there. Not full support, not the comprehensive async IO support, but more than enough for us to get on with. Which would allow me to use async IO on circuit Python. But I can't find the damn link. I literally had this open. Hmm. Let me just do a quick search, maybe be able to pick it up for me. Uh, Maybe if 
register as Oh, okay, it's not. There we go. Warriors of Wire, one of the contributors. Um, added in some basic async IO support, which is very cool. Um, he also gives some examples, I believe. That means I'll be able to use the um, uh, async IO type structures. He gives some examples here on these Tasco. Um, I think he uses it, yeah, he's got an SPI example here, um, where he basically puts in a request to an SPI peripheral and then wait for it to come back so he can handle the stuff. And you can see his, uh, you know, his sent like, functions here he's using. So it looks very cool, so I'm very excited by that. That means I can get there a bit quicker. Um, example close. Yeah, this is a bit more of a complex one here where he's scheduling um, different parts of reading some rotary sensors and changing um, what's on the screen. So it's nice. I'm going to have a look at that. I've literally only just discovered that in the last few days. So, but it's looking good, which means we should be able to use some circuit Python as well to do some of that. One of the other things that I'm thinking about, just to review where we were. So if I can bring up, let me see if I can bring up my tab. Uh, I think that's all the new stuff, unless anyone else has anything. So I'll just dive into the conversational part briefly. Okay, I'm gonna open here. Okay, so t talking about um, ice ice core that we currently have on black ice, and I'm thinking because I'm getting through the uh, ice cores that we've got. And I don't know how far those are going to go. So in the new year, the original plan was to do a Black Ice 5 type product. And what I'm thinking of doing to uh, just to as a solution in that space is something a bit similar to Ice Core. But, um, the, I mean, you, you just saw the ice core board in PCAC that I was playing around with. Um, the ice core board, which I have here, just to remind you, that's an ice core, which currently goes on the black ice. And it, the key thing here is if you look at the rear, you've got two connectors on the base. These are the expansion connectors. I've actually got the uh, headers plugged into the um, connectors. That's where you see both ends. Those are 
dual row 25, so it's 50 pins on each, and there's two of them, one on each side. But what I'm thinking of doing is doing a, a replacement for ice core, but I want to make it smaller. Whenever I try to integrate this, it's fine for something larger, but if I wanted to make, say, the a tile board with two tiles on it, this would have to go on the other side. Or if I wanted to do four tiles, I couldn't put it on. Because you'd have tiles on each side. In order to fit something into a tile type environment, it would need to be smaller. So this is 50 by 50 mil or thereabouts. And what I was thinking is I wonder if it would be possible to make this kind of 25 by 50. So I keep the length along the bottom here for the connectors, but reduce the height to half. So it'll be more rectangular in nature. Um, and I'd reduce the number of pins. Um, And I've got a choice. I either keep it 50 along the bottom, like this, or maybe I make it slightly longer, but only 25 high. That would allow me to do something like 80 pins on one header. So I want to go down to one of these headers rather than two. So I could either just have a 50 pin. I've got two of them on here, or I could go for a single 50 pin, possible, or maybe something with a few more pins on it, like an 80 pin connector. Now, if you remember, I actually did something similar to this when I was looking through um, I can't remember what it's called. Let me see if I can bring it up. I was working on a amalgam board that was similar to this. I don't know if I've got the old one that was yellow. Bear with me. I think I made this one longer. Hold on. Let me just check. Yeah, I think this looks a bit wider. Let me just um, find this out. You get it on the screen. I can't remember what the dimensions are. Let's just bring that across so you guys can see it. Yeah, so that's like, um, I know this is easy to buy face. This was one of the considerations for an album, which we backed off of. Um, this was a higher level board and it was easy to buy face. But, Dimensionally, it would be sim it could be similar in width. So in this case here, you've got um, 80 pins, so 40 on each side. So if you look at this header, it goes up to 80 pins. And this one, in terms of width, is just double check. So that's about the same width as ice core, and you can go up to 
kind of 80 pins. It's actually slightly wider, it's about 52 rather than 50 across. And this one is 30 high. I'd bring that down to something like uh, let me show you what that would look like. I'll take it down to about 25. You can see the dotted line here. There. This looks you. If that's got it. Um, so, if it's possible, fit it into those kind of dimensions. And if you can fit it into those dimensions, it means you can integrate that into uh, one of the stack tile or stack boards. So it would be great for the size. So the question is, if you did this not for the al amalgam, but if you did this for the, uh, what should we call it, Ice Core 2, part of Black Ice 5, then what would be on that board? Um, I think what we'd need to put on there would be obviously the FPGA uh, and I've been looking at uh, BGA uh, versions of the uh, ICE 40 with 100 plus pins maybe that elk similar to the number of pins we have on ice core maybe slightly less mm -hmm. um, and that those the dimensions of those would be something of the order of five by five now because I'd go for the higher density BPAs uh, that would be significantly smaller than this. Yeah. We'd probably need some extra RAM as well. Uh, I'd probably use some SD RAM. Maybe, I was thinking maybe 8 megabytes. But the other thing I'm thinking here is I'd use a BGA um, STM32 on there. Um, if you look at the current ice core, everything on this, this ice core is um, GPFP. Right. So the three big chips on here take up most of the room the FPGA, the STM32 microcontroller, and the SD RAM. All of those would need to be, you know, BGA types to fit on this sort of thing. So it would be a miniaturization of that to a degree, but it means it will be able to fit into more places. Um, the reason for going for that kind of dimension would be not just for the Ice Core 2, um, but what may also come later on is um, something based on the uh, NX technology, the lattice, um, are working on that will fit into the same size as well. So I'm designing with that in mind. Uh, we won't have support for that probably until the end of 2021, whatever. But this is a uh, late 21, early 22, um, advanced beyond the ice, must be too. So Mythical's just asked the question, is there an, a QSPI flash for onboard bitstream or does it load from SD card each boot? Um, what are you talking about? Um, Mythical, are you talking about the current ice core or what I'm designing here? 
Normally we wouldn't load it from the SD card, although that's entirely possible. We've got circuit Python built in, you can do that. Um, on the current ICE core, there is a flash, USBI flash chip. The cores, I, the FPGAs themselves, the lattice FPGAs themselves, don't use quad SPI to load, they just use SPI. So they read, you know. Um, so if you look at this here, it's, you know, flash chips up to this. Um, and we would definitely have one of those on there. However, whether we'd let the FPGA load that itself directly or whether we'd have the microcontroller loaded into the FPGA um, depends. There are two different ways of, of doing that. And I quite like the latter, really, letting the microcontroller control it. Um, so the thing I'd be thinking here. I'm definitely thinking about because I'm thinking about the integration of Python, uh, whether that's micro or circuit or both, having that integrated into the entire story, um, this would represent a more integrated solution. In that. So it would be much more like the alloy found was in that regard. But the difference here is we're using an STM32, more powerful that process. Um, of course, and cool. I was just thinking on boot methods, my Nexus supports. I don't really know what all the options are. I mean, you can wire the flash directly to the FPGA. It will read a flash using SPI and do it that way. Or you can have the um, microcontroller just program the FPGA to choose it. Um, one advantage of having it connected to the microcontroller is the microcontroller can then read the flash and use the flash for its own memory. And don't forget, if we're running circuit Python, Having quite a nice large flash means we can use that for storage for the circuit Python as well, as well as the image for the uh, FPGA. That kills two birds with one stone. What? Kills two birds with one stone. Not a spoon. No idea what a spoon is. Maybe I've just invented it. Spoon like stone, perhaps. Um, so that's what I'm working on at the moment. Now, I don't have any CAD for that yet because even though I found some possible components, I haven't done footprint for them. They're both a new footprint for my library. Uh, the BGA version of the um, ICE 40 and the uh, BGA version of the STM32. Bah! Why do so many of these things work with Python? I really dislike the language. It's just really popular. People like it and it's quick and easy. You, some, you could say quick and dirty in some cases, but you might uh, offend some Python folks. Don't forget, um, you know, all the firmware we've got currently for high schools written in C and C++. So. Uh, I don't know what your language is, Mythical, but you've always got C and C++. Okay, We always support that on the microcontroller. So that's not an issue. In fact, Circuit Python isn't really just Python. There's a lot of C underneath. And you can write in C or Python or both. So it's not, um, not a big deal if you're into C. Um, Yeah, so which of course says C, C++, C++, C++. Not a problem. Uh, there's, it's C underneath all of that circuit pipe and, and all the historical stuff I've done on IceCore is um, C slash C++ based. And all the tooling is there for it. And you can even debug with the SWD type things. Um, I don't know if you've seen these. 
Let me show you one. Uh, and I've got some of these available. If you ever need one, let me know. I haven't made these available on the uh, on the store, but I do have a whole bunch of them that I did buy um, for resale purposes. Easy SWD USB. Uh, with headers on them, uh, and I always make it make these supported. Always break out the pins so that you can plug those in. That's what I use for debugging. Nice and easy for other folks. Do the same thing. Um. One of the other things I'd like to do further down the road is some more rust. Um, but it's time is the problem here. Yeah, we're doing the rust stuff. But there's good STM32 support for the rust. And we're seeing um, some SPD support from the from NMIGEN, which is kind of cool. It could make using rust quite nice. But anyhow, so that's one of the thinking here. So in terms of uh, what we use, what I was thinking of using is going for one of the low power ice quarters to keep it down. Uh, we use the HX on ice core. I'd like to use a slightly lower power. So I'm thinking of combining an LP type you know, with similar sort of dimensions to what we're using now for ice core. And on the STM32, the microcontroller side, what I was thinking of using was probably again an F7, um, but a BGA version of that, probably with a lot more pins. Because what I want to do um, is add some SDRAM. By using the larger FPGA uh, devices, I'd probably use a um, 176 for STM32, and that would enable me to connect uh, a 32 bit SD RAM uh, chip, you know, like an 8 megabyte SD RAM chip directly to the um, STM32, which would be nice. Uh, that means that both Circuit Python and C would have a nice big heap, eight megabyte heap. Um, in addition, you're probably going to get about 256, at least 256 internal SRAM. As well, which is even faster. Plus, it's got the art cache, which is quite good. Uh, ROM size is fairly small, 64k. So I'd need to add to that. I'd probably add in a um, external SPI flash, as big as I could, you know, put on there that's financially viable. Uh, yeah, in the megabyte range. But I don't know quite how many megabytes at this point. What else would be on there? Well, I'd have at least one USB, maybe two. Uh, why would I go for two? Well, I'd want one for the circuit piping stuff, which is really so it presents itself. Uh, so, in order to support circuit piping as well as micro piping, uh, you need a USB that works with tiny USB um, that enables it to appear as a storage device. Um, it actually doubles up storage plus um, comes up as a TTY uh, serial of the USB. Then the second one could be a second serial, a high speed serial, which is also really useful for debugging and stuff. But it also provide could provide backward or uh, backward support. You know, backward compatibility support with black ice programming because a number of the uh, tools and bits and 
things like iStudio already support that as a mechanism for programming black eyes. So keeping that as well as having the circuit Python way of doing it would be um, really handy. So there's a possibility I might put two USBs on there, similar to what's on i support now, but actually use both of them this time now. Um, and I might put, I definitely put an SD card, 4 bit, you know, MMC slash SD on there as well. We'd have that. And then I'd probably add an FPC connector. Maybe I'm looking at doing an FPC connector to support something like, uh, you know, um, an OVR or parallel camera. Um, so it would be, you know, one of the small, what are they, 24 pin FPCs connectors? Uh, there is another possibility of putting an LCD connector on there as well. However, there are some issues with that because effectively that would have to share pins with the um, SD RAM. Um, but as long as it was close to the SD RAM, that probably wouldn't adversely affect it. Don't forget, we're probably not going to be running the SD RAM full back. I'd need to check the rate and whether there'd be any termination issues by doing that. That's very much a maybe because of the termination issue for using the same pen. Um, I think because the STM32s tend to use um, the same pins or the same port mappings as the external memory controller, which we need, the FPC controller, which we used to connect to the SD RAM. Uh, so if that's a problem, then I might not do it. In which case, we'd leave it to whatever the door board is to do that. So it's one of the things I've been thinking about. Misses me. Oh, Glasgow's gone live, apparently. I should have to look at that on Classify. We might have a sneak peek in a minute. So that's what I'm thinking there. So that would be effectively what is Ice Core now at the Ice Core 2. So I'm interested in what to uh, think about that. And then let me know on the stream or let me know um, later on on the forum or whatever. But um, I'm very attracted to the idea of a smaller, uh, almost like a half size, effectively, ice core. Um, with Python integration, whether that be circuit or micro. I don't have both coming. So that's what I'm thinking on that front. Um, I don't think I'd need to put anything else on the core board. Anything else that we would want, I think, can easily be placed on the carrier board that that plugs into. And in terms of the carrier boards available, I would obviously do at least a two tile stack board. If there was enough IOs, this is doubtful I could do a four tile, but I don't think I'd have enough. I'd probably be more inclined to do something like a um, two tile carrier that also has a mix mod compatibility. A bit like the carrier we're looking at for. Um, for ice core, the black ice pie carrier, if you like. But for the ice core 2, we could make that significantly smaller. 
Uh, I think this the current one to use it with the Ice Core 2 with the design I've got. If I go ahead with that, it'll be 125mm by um, 75mm. Whereas I think with an Ice Core 2 type design that I've been talking about here, then we could probably, it would just be 75 by 75 uh, and that would fit in two tiles and uh, two USBs. So the USB is um, one two. But on the, on the carrier, you'd have two tile sockets, and you'd have uh, a mix mod option. You could solder in yourself, so I'd have the connectivity for the mix mode. Um, and possibly, you know, an LCD or some display type connector. I don't know what. I don't know whether I'd go for, you know, like an HDMI or just an LCD in this case. <clears throat> I think the HDMI stuff is probably better done by. Um, By the um, black stack with an album stuff that needs to be fired on there because you've got better internal memory support for that faster. Um, the other thing about this is if I only had two tiles plus the mix mod with the ice core fitting on that, it would all fit on one side, and that keeps cross down because I mean it. I only have to populate one side of the carrier board. That can make a big difference. Also on the carrier I could have a uh, a spot for wireless and Bluetooth for Bluetooth. Which would be kind of nice. Um, and anything else we wish to add would be, would be plenty of room for that. So that's my thinking there on the... Um, that kind of fills the black ice space because we will run out of the current ice cores current sell through rate we will run out of those probably by the end of the first quarter maybe of 2021 I've already got back orders for the brand things so uh, I need to double check how many of those I've got um, I've, I've lost count down here, I've got left actually, so I need to check my stock on there. So that's where we are on that. So I wanted to plant that in people's minds. Um, as I say, I'm looking at sourcing components for that and also um, whether I can fit it into those kind of dimensions. Because if I can put it in those kind of dimensions, I think it might be a fair way. That would be interesting feedback from anyone, what they think of that. So we'd still have the black stack stroke amalgam at the top, CCP5 based, with um, the tiles that fit in. Um, and where we currently have Black Ice MX, then we'd have a replacement, and Black Ice MX is really just ice core with a mixed mod carrier. So the replacement for that would be a kind of ice core 2, which is a smaller uh, system on a module, 25 by 52 or whatever, 26 by 52, and um, a carrier for that that would house at least two, two tiles and maybe uh mix mod give us back compatibility and that continues to serve that space that the black ice mx fulfills albeit with updates in terms of being able to support um powers as well as mix mod and also support circuit pipeline which the current ice board does not support Last, I think on a carrier we'd have a Wi-Fi option. And potentially even Bluetooth, which would be nice. 
Um, so that's the thinking there. So I just wanted to put that one across. Um, I'm not going to do any in-depth stuff today because my time is short. Um, I have Christmas duties to perform this evening. And no, I am not delivering presents. My name is not Santa. But I do have some, uh, some family stuff to do. So I will push on the time, but I wanted to get those ideas across. Uh, is there anything else that anyone needs me to talk about this evening? I know it's a short one. Um, there's any any questions anyone has that they need me to answer? So I've still got a little bit of time. Throw over anything or any questions on what I've just been discussing. Um, have you looked at Rust at all, Mythical? You're talking about other languages. Have you looked at Rust? Does that interest you? I've had quite a few people that have been really interested in Rust um, saying, is there any way we, can we support Rust you know, on the MyStorm platform? Seems to be quite hot. Hi, Mythical. Yeah, sorry, you lost the stream there. Hope it wasn't me or the stream transmission. Um, I first tried Rust back in God. It was it wasn't it was pre 1.0 version. I mean, it was years ago. I remember one Christmas I was working on it. I was working on some Xmos stuff, and I was building some uh, network. Kit and I needed to do the testing over network, and I used uh, Rust to build the test frame from the PC side. Uh, and then I haven't used it for a while. I keep poking my head back into it, looking at it, and thinking, I've got to do this, got to do this. It looks kind of cool. I mean, I, I love the actor, actor pattern, and I love the things like pattern matching. Is in there, which is kind of cool. Yeah, another thing to learn, Mythical. I mean, story of our lives, right? And loads of stuff like that. I mean, I would like to do it, and I will do it at some point. It's just right now. Too much to do. I've got still got lots of hardware to do, and I really want to do some more software work. So. Um, I've got to get these current phases of hardware done. I mean, we're kind of, we're almost been locked down. Anyway. Actually, we're on a tier system in the UK, and uh, luckily we're in tier two. Most of the people around us are in tier three. However, I'm not really going out much. So I, my head's been pretty much down working on all of this stuff anyhow. Plus doing all the accounts, and we had a admin crap over the last week. Which has been a pain in the backside. You're in the UK. Oh, cool. Um, so, Mythical said uh, one of the few PC PCB boards he designed was a Raspberry Pi handout. That sounds really cool. Do you have any links? Love to have a peek. You might not be off, off part then. So did that take a Raspberry Pi module then, or was it something that attached to one of the existing Raspberry Pis? Mythical. A 
Okay, so you use the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's kind of cool. I want to do some Raspberry Pi Zero action. In the early days, you, you're probably not aware of this before, but the very first version that Ken and I did uh, the boards pre Black Ice, where the board was actually called the MyStorm board, um, uh, we had to do. We decided we were going to do this in May sometime, and then we had the um, Bosch camp, the open source hardware camp. Um, in August, end of August, the following, um, in a few months' time. So we had to get a the first, you know, effectively the first open source FPGA product designed and built, because we were we committed to doing a um, set of workshops using it. Incredibly. <laughs> um, so the original one, the way that we did it in order to get it working quickly, because we hadn't done all the microcontroller support for programming the FPGA and all of that stuff at this point. So um, we actually used the Raspberry Pi, like Raspberry Pi Zeros or gen generic Raspberry Pi to program the FPGA over an IDC cable. So on the original boards, there was an IDC connector. Uh, designed to connect to the Raspberry Pi, uh, and I want to revisit that at this point. I was thinking of maybe doing a carrier for Raspberry Pi, um, or some such thing, because there are all sorts of clever things we can do. So where where we might be using, you know, circuit Python to do stuff at the moment, we could use a Raspberry Pi to do it as well, which is interesting. I'm going to have a look at the link called the same, even, even if you do say it's rubbish. Okay, bunch of buttons. Did it have a screen on it as well? Yeah, TFT. 2.2 inch, that looks it. Cool. Uh, I saw an interesting pocket one the other day. What are you saying here? The analog pocket. Oh, I've seen this one before. Hold on. Wow, yeah, that does look cool. That's a brilliant 3D rendering. That's very cool. So, what does that have in it? So, scroll down. Oh, I should have this on the screen so that other people can see it. Oh, no. I could see why you would like to do something as polished as this. It does look good, doesn't it? I mean, you could kind of do something FPGA based like this. Difficult or Pi Pi Circuit Python or Mod Python, or you could just use the retro ports. It depends what you want to run on it. What are they running? Are these retro games or are these um, custom games? 1600 by 1440. My goodness. Ten times the resolution of the original game by me. That's amazing. Gorilla Glass. Damn. This is serious. Oh, and it runs the old uh, cartridges. Then gear, Neo Geo, Color, Atari Lynx. Nice. Wow. Oh, they're doing. Uh, as well. Mm. 
They are a busy bunch. But what's on the inside of that? What, what, what are they using in the power garage? Yeah. It looks very, very cool. Technical specs, compatible with Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Cartridges. So is this FPGA based or is this emulated on like uh, an arm? All FPGA. Very cool. I mean, there's a lot of retro stuff done on our FPGAs already. Just take a look at the forum, you'll see. This is probably a slightly larger level because of the graphic support that they're, they're, they've got here. You know, that resolution, you need a bit more memory to do that effectively. 1600 by 1440. Uh, you know, you need a lot. You probably need some. You need at least an ECB five, really, and maybe some fairly fast RAM. I guess you could probably do the RAM. You've got an internal connection. It's very cool. I've not heard of this one before, Mister Paul. Not heard of it. I like it. Oh, is that a picture of what's inside? Is oh, it an artist? Rendition. Pocket is designed for FPGA development. And he added a second dedicated FPGA just for developers to develop and support their own cores. We have access to the analogs, proprietary hardware, and scalers. We think developers are going to do some amazing things with it. That's an interesting way to go. So they'd actually put two FPGAs in there. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so there's two FPGAs. One that does a dedicated, obviously, very fast graphic, and then they've got a second FPGA to get user stuff in their retro stuff. Very interesting way of doing it. Um, that's an alternative to going with some of the other things that we talked about before. You've got the Dazzler stuff, I don't have heard of this, it's quite interesting. This was um, Game Duino. Uh, um, and we have a few users that have used this stuff. And he's just done a new version. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen this. So basically, this is a graphic accelerator that he designed. Um, and you can hook this up. You actually drive this from SPI. And I think he's talking about a quad SPI type version as well. Which is another way to go. And that offloads a lot of the um, game stuff. But there are a lot of people in the community that want to do the... the Graphic stuff inside the F same FPGA as they're doing the um, retros or the gaming. There are different schools of thought on that. <laughs> uh, 
Another project plan. Graphic GPU. It's work. Doesn't matter having lots of them. Let's do project plans. Not unusual. But sometimes you do have to focus on them. Particular one. Yeah, we'll start small and work your way up. Particularly with anything new. But I always do. Um, I should also give you a link to that, just in case you're interested in looking into that. Well, I've just been told that the Glasgow campaign is live. I don't know if you guys have um, heard of the Glasgow. So Glasgow was designed by, um, it's actually a community project. Um, so there's a number of people involved. Um, the guy doing the hardware for this, in terms of manufacturing and recent changes is Peter. And you can see that here but um the original design was is it not listed on here uh white quark is the twitter name there's other people involved andrew wiggle or a wiggle and markham 42 all of those are on twitter in the open source community so um, the interesting thing about Glasgow Interface Explorer is it's based around an ICE 40 HX8. So it's kind of similar to what's on the ICE core, uh, only it's 8K rather than 4K. Uh, it's a BGA package on the board here. Um, it's also on is that chip there, and then it's also got a USB interface uh, and FIFO. And then it's got some level shifters that are electronically controlled. So it's great for testing and stuff. So if you can use it for signal generation, signal reading, or interacting with all sorts of different standards, whether that's programming EEPROMs um, or Flash, uh, connecting up to things like a PS2 uh, interface or a serial or SPI. Um, you know, VGA out, but you can do all sorts of little daughter boards for it. Um, and there's two sorts of connectors there's an upper and a lower on these, as well as shared ground connecting. So it will, uh, it will be able to understand many of the different standards that we're going to do, my own standards. And it's got, <coughs> it's got um, some good uh, Python support and the uh, the HDL design is done in MMIGEN, which is really cool. So that's an interesting project, and it's just gone live. It's already 138% funded. Holy crap. That's amazing. That's like, so that was actually an. I mean, they've been giving up for a while, so it's been on uh, CrowdSpy for a while, but it hasn't been live. My word. And it's already oversubscribed, mind you. $25,000 dollar gold. That's pretty good. So they, what are they charging? $139. It is quite spending, but you do get a lot of stuff in there. Those level shifters are really cool. And it's a great open source project. So that's just gone live. I've literally just been notified of that today. Should have covered that in the news and I forgot. Um, there's an early bird for 119. Oh no, it's gone already. My word. Aluminium case early bird as well. That's gone. Aluminium case looks nice. 
Wow, that's incredibly fast, that went. I've been paying attention earlier, shouldn't I? Never mind. Anyhow, so that's going to do me all day, unless you get any other questions, guys, because I need to go off now and do Christmassy stuff. And it's been a very long day, frankly. So, okay, if there's nothing else, listen, folks, have a good Christmas, all of you. Stay safe. Particularly if you're in the UK with this new uh, super forest strain, um, you know, my advice is isolate until it dies down or until you get the vaccine as much as you can, work from home if you can. But anyhow, have a good Christmas. I will uh, come back next Wednesday and we'll do a kind of review, year in review stream or something. Something like that. Uh, maybe have a bit of fun. But I appreciate your time, everyone. Uh, and I will see you next Wednesday. Ciao.